Number 42, polymers are large molecules composed of simple units repeated many times. Thus, they often have relatively simple empirical formulas. Calculate the empirical formulas of the following polymers. And then we have letter B. So in this case, we have to find the empirical formula for saran, which is 24.8% carbon, 2.0% hydrogen, and 73.1% chlorine. Now, just to put this into perspective, we have to find the empirical formula of saran. So this is saran wrap, right? The, the plastic wrap that we use to wrap up, you know, our peanut butter and jelly sandwich when we go off to work or school, right? Um, so all that plastic wrap is, or this saran wrap, is just a bunch of a single compound just repeated thousands or millions or maybe even billions of times depending on how, you know, long the piece of saran wrap is. So we know how to calculate empirical formulas, right? It's a four-step process from the percentages, right? The percent compositions. And this is the process right here. Let me make this a little smaller just so that we, I have a little room to write because we got a lot going on. But you could basically get an empirical formula, which remember guys, is the most simplified formula right, a simplified chemical formula from the uh, percents in four steps. So let's start with the percentages. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to list out the percentages over here. So we have 24.8% carbon, we have 2.0% hydrogen, and then we have 73.1% chlorine. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we always going to take the percents and we're going to convert it into gram amounts. Well, how do we do that? Now, remember the highest percentage, right? Is a hundred percent. So I can assume that if we're dealing with a total percentage of 100%, I could translate that and say that the gram sample that I have of the saran wrap is a total of 100 grams. This would make the percents the same as the grams. You have 24.8% carbon. Well, now we have 24.8 grams of carbon because the total amount of grams will equal up to 100 grams and the total percentage will equal up to 100%. Now, what I would do is I would just quickly add these together just to make sure that you do have very, very close to a 100%. And that, you know, there's no missing elements here. But if I add it up, I get 99.9%. So we're pretty good. So I'm going to say that this equals the 24.8 grams of carbon. This is going to be 2.0 grams of hydrogen. And then this is going to be 73.1 grams of chlorine. So the first part is basically done, right? All we had to do was just say that the percent equals the amount of grams and we're done. Three steps to go. The second one is we have to convert grams into the mole values. Well, how do we do that? Remember, any time that we have to convert from grams to moles is we got to go on the periodic table. So here's my periodic table of the three elements that we're dealing with here. And what we're doing is we're just going to be basically setting up a conversion. And when you're setting up a conversion, you always take the number that you have and multiply by some ratio, right? Where a number is going to go on the top and the number is going to go on the bottom of this ratio, right? So for each one of these, I'm just going to make my little ratio, right? And now I like to cancel out first. I say, okay, I don't want grams of carbon anymore. Whatever unit you don't want always goes on the opposite side. So in this case, the grams of carbon will go on the bottom. Grams of hydrogen will go on the bottom. And then gram of chlorine will go on the bottom of that ratio. And the unit that you want, AKA moles, is the one that goes on the top. So I have moles of carbon on the top. I got mole of hydrogen on the top. And then I have mole of chlorine on the top. But now what are the numbers that go, you know, on the numerator and on the denominator for all those, the ratios. Now we go to the periodic table. 
and we have to take the mass number. The mass number is not the whole numbers that you see in the periodic table. That's the atomic number. The mass number, or the average masses, are the decimal values that you see on the periodic table. Now, my numbers might be a little bit different from yours. That's okay because different periodic tables round differently. But I'm just going to take the numbers that I see. Now, just know that this number is always equal to one mole, one mole, one mole of that element. These numbers are actually the gram values. So these numbers will always go with the gram value, and you always are left with one mole. So 1.008 grams of hydrogen equals one mole of hydrogen, 12.01 grams of carbon equals one mole of carbon, and then the same thing for chlorine. So when you're doing your ratios, the one always goes with the mole. So one mole of carbon equals 12.01 grams of carbon. One mole of hydrogen equals 1.008 mole uh, grams of hydrogen, and then one mole of chlorine equals 35.45 grams of chlorine. So now the units grams cancel out with grams on all three of them, and that's good because we're left with the unit that we want, which is mole, right? Mole of carbon, mole of hydrogen, and mole of chlorine. Now we just have to do the math. So anytime that a number is in the denominator, remember, DD, denominator divide. So we're going to do 24.8 divided by 12.01, I'm going to cut it off after a, a few uh, decimals. So I'm going to say 2.065, and that's moles of carbon. I got 2 divided by 1.008. I get 1.984 mole of hydrogen. And then 73.1 divided by 35.45. I get 2.062 moles of chlorine. And now this part is done. We have the moles. Well now, how do I go from a mole to a mole ratio? Well, we kind of talked about a ratio before when we did our conversions. This idea of having a number divided by some other number is a ratio. So we have like half of the piece of the puzzle. We have the one number for each one, and now all we have to do to make that ratio is we have to divide by another number. Now the question is, what is the number that's going to go on the bottom for each one to make my ratio? Well, remember what an empirical formula is. It's the simplest or the smallest subscripts, right, the small numbers, in my chemical formula. So if we're trying to find out what the smallest ratio is, and it's the smallest subscripts, stick with that idea. You're going to be dividing the number that is the smallest in all of these. So for example, between 2.065, 1.984, and 2.062, it looks like 1.984 is the smallest out of all of them. So that's the number that you're going to be dividing each one by. So 2.065 divided by 1.984, 1.984 divided by 1.984, and then 2.062 divided by 1.984. Okay, so let's get these numbers. Now at this stage of the game, you should get close to a whole number. If you have a very, 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 uh, you know, large number with decimals, aka, you know, a lot of decimals, but you can round to a whole number, just write the whole number. So let's see. 2.065 divided by 1.984, I get 1.04 moles of carbon. Now, I would look at this number, the 1.04, and say that this is really close to just the whole number 1. So I'm just going to say that this is 1 mole of carbon, 1.984 divided by 1.984 is just one mole of hydrogen. And then 2.062 divided by 1.984, I get 1.04 again, but that's very, very close to one. So I could say one mole of hydrogen, uh, oop, not hydrogen, chlorine. 
And now my mole ratio is complete. I have all whole numbers, so we're good. Now, all we have to do is just find that empirical formula. So from the numbers that you have, those are your subscripts. Now, it doesn't matter what element you start at. I'm just going to work from the top and work my way down to the bottom. I have a carbon, and I have one of them, right? Now, you don't have to write the one. Usually with ones, we don't write that, so I'll just skip that. Then I have a hydrogen, and I have one of them. So you can put it, but technically you don't have to. And then I have Cl, and one of them. So one, but you don't have to put that. And that's it. That's the empirical formula. You're just taking your whole numbers that you found in your ratio and just putting it into a compound. And that is the final answer. There you go. Guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. That will help us out a lot. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I hope you, you guys are doing great, all right? Have an awesome day, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.